Today, I'm going to be chatting with JC Thomas, and I've been a fan of her photography for a really long time and her capturing different racing events, sled pulling. And I wanted to learn more about where her passion for motorsports came from, for photography, how she merged both of them together. So I'm looking forward to our chat today. Before we get to it, I want to give a shout out to a couple of our sponsors that help make the Diesel Podcast possible. The first is Kershaw Knives, and they have an, a, a discount code just for Diesel Podcast listeners that gets you 40% off MSRP. If you use code TDP40 at kershaw.kaiusa.com, it's a great way to save some money on some cool gear. So if you're in the market for a knife for hunting, fishing, EDC, something around the job site, around the house they've definitely got you covered with a complete lineup of different knives to and set up to meet really any budget um, that you might have so you have different choices for blade steel blade shape different opening mechanisms different handle designs so if you're in the market head on over to kershaw.kaiusa.com use go tdb40 and get 40 percent off msrp also want to give a shout out to dmax store i've had a great time chatting with them in the past about different build options for duramaxes so if you're in the market for upgrading your lb7 all the way to your l5p anything in between They've got a brand new website, ton of products on there. They love to chat with you guys. They love to be able to take their knowledge, experience, and be able to make sure you get the right parts in the right order to be able to build your dream truck. So if you're looking to do a build or maybe just make the truck more reliable, uh, make it last, head on over to dmaxstore.com or give them a call at 877-4MY-DMAX. All right, let's get to today's podcast with JC and talking about sled pulling motorsports, um, her passion for them, and then how she's combined photography and capturing those moments for not just competitors, but people that are out there, um, you know, checking out her website, seeing things on social media. JC, welcome to the Diesel Podcast. I look forward to chatting with you today. I've been a, a big fan of senior photography for years, and um, we were chatting before the podcast a little bit, and I was like, it would be so cool to talk about your interest in that, how you capture it, because it like the, the events and the things that you're doing, it's like at the heart of being a diesel enthusiast, right? Like either with our trucks or where we first saw them. So I thought it'd be really cool to hear your story and and talk about what you do. So welcome to the diesel podcast. Thanks for having me. I've been really excited about this as well. (laughs) It's, it's so, it's so cool because each one of those, like the pictures that I've seen throughout the years, it's like, they're capturing a moment and then it would make me start to think about when did I see my first sled pull or my first drag race or, you know, something like that. And it can be, I know it's really special to the competitors, you know, the, the, the people who have the trucks and, and everything. Where did your interest in photography and like capturing these moments kind of start? Like, how'd you get, uh, you know, really interested in, in doing that? Well, I've always been a big fan of motorsports throughout the years. I grew up around it, and it's just been a very big, passionate part of my life, I guess. And then um, I've always enjoyed doing photography, and I like looking at things outside of the box compared to, like, other photographers. I've always played around with that. And then um, I got hooked up with a uh, pulling association here in East Central Iowa, and they kind of just threw me in front of a camera. <laughs> and so <laughs> then a little bit of history. I just like bringing a different spin on it because I feel like a lot of photographers, they, they shoot just a certain kind of way. And I don't know, I like bringing it a little bit artsy, a little fun. And the deep, let me tell you, those are the best fucking photos. <laughs> 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 Walk me through, walk me through that part of it because that that really piqued my interest with capturing something that's different. So, when you go to one of these sled pulls, what are you looking for to be able to capture that perfect moment? Is it just like uh, a sense that you get, or almost like second kind of nature, where you think, you know, this picture will be great for this? Or how do you approach that from a creative standpoint? Um. I guess I'm really not sure. I just really click the button. Uh, I look for uh, textures. So um, the more that the dirt is turning up, I really want to get that. Or when the smoke is coming out, I want it to be the darkest that it can be. So then I can play around with the lighting on the editing aspect of that. Or um, just special moments. Like uh, I, I, if you've watched a lot of polling, there's a lot of people that will have like the person that's backing them up. And those are, I feel like a lot of special moments because those people are normally pretty close. So I like capturing that kind of aspect of it. Cause most of the time, those people are the ones that help build the truck or, you know, 
help do whatever they are at the the poll. It's, it's somebody important. You don't want Joe Blow backing you up to the sled. <laughs> so it's capturing that almost that human that human side of it in the picture with the driver and then whoever the important person is and whatever they do, capturing that in a photo. And that's something I don't see a lot of, or I should say, like, I, I would really appreciate seeing that because those are the stories. And I'm sure you hear them all the time. That's what people talk about. Like they'll talk about the performance of the truck, but it's the stories with the people that are with them. Um, the, the people that help build the truck or you know, help get them there. That's really what sticks in people's minds. And you're able to capture that. Yep. I, I like that moment because I feel like, a lot of times for those people, they're so wrapped in what they're doing. Realize that like from an outsider perspective, that's a really cool connection. And yeah. I, I like the, I think a lot of people think motorsports is just like, it's just one person, you know, cause they're the only person that's going down the track, but you know, a lot of time they're, they're teams, you know, that's, that's their family. They spend every weekend in summer together and, you know, during winter and fall, they're putting everything together and bullshit and trying to get everything in. And I like being able to capture that. Were there any challenges, like say the first time, the first time you were going to take a picture and you're at a sled pull, were you intimidated by the situation? Were you excited by it? Was it like, what do I do? I've, you know, never done it in this, this kind of environment. What was it like the first time you went out there to take pictures? Um, honestly, it was like a big deal to me to start off with. I always like reported like my friends that would go down. And um, when I started taking the photos, I realized like as a photographer, you get to get closer to the track. And that, oh my God, that, <laughs> that so thrilling when you're so close to the track and you have the tractor or truck going by you with the sled. Oh, I get your heart pumping. Like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> And it's so, I always make the joke that I became a photographer because I'm on front row seats. <laughs> and like, you get to go everywhere and it, it's just so awesome. So it's more of a thrill for me. And so after my first time, I'll rem never forget it. It was a, a pull down in Davenport for ECI. And I was down on the track, like right on the line. And um, uh, this guy, Ron, you uh, Neiman, he's got a tractor uh, hot farm and he just like pulled up like right next to me and the freaking water from his ice box came up and I felt <laughs> that was like one of my first times like really kind of getting into the photos and I'm like oh my god like that's <laughs> so freaking cool like <laughs> it's, it's so I think it's a, a completely different sort of experience and that's where when i was thinking about having this conversation i really i think it's where most of my focus went to because i know what it's like to be in the stands and be way up there and you're you're just watching things or you know mostly nowadays you're watching it on a live feed or on social media or something and it's cool you can see what's happening but once you get closer to the action whether it's sled pulling or drag racing there's a whole other element to it and you're capturing that in these pictures, yeah. which does something like way more than I think like video when I watch it on an app or something like that. And I just think of, I think about like, I haven't really been around sled pulling that much, but years ago I went to shy diesel extravaganza and I didn't realize how big sled pulling was in the Midwest till I went there and I saw all the trucks lined up and all the semi trucks that the guys would haul their stuff with. And the stands were completely full and just hearing it, it was a completely different experience being at ground level versus sitting up in the stands or being away from it. And I can totally understand that sort of excitement that's around. It. I think that's what pulls people in, you know, to be enthusiasts is, is that excitement. It is, it is, it is awesome. I love bringing being able to experience that element and being a part of it for those shows. It's, it's like I've the experience with anything else. What, um, as far as growing through like the photography side, the creative side have, 
like when, when you first started to where you're at now and where you want to go, have there been certain goals that you've set for yourself? Like whether it's with technology or maybe it's with different events that you want to go to or different creative things that you want to express, how have you challenged yourself with progressing through taking these pictures and capturing these moments? Um, yeah. So I always like to start the year off with goals going on. Um, like one of my big goals that I have, like it's a long-term goal is to shoot in all, I would say all 50 States, but there's no tractor pulling in, uh, Hawaii. There was way back in the day, <laughs> but all 49 States I want to capture in. Um, so I've been kind of booking along there. Like last year, uh, one of my big goals is I really wanted to go diesels and dark corners. If you have not been to that show, you have to go. That is the best show ever. It is so cool. It's down in Georgia. So that was really cool that I got to accomplish that last year. Um, but to like get to those goals, um, a lot of it has to deal with just connections, getting to know people. And once you get to know this person, so then you kind of brings you to like this group of people. And then once you get talking to that group of people, then, you know, it just kind of like trickles down. So I always like trying to talk to people. I'm not always the greatest at it at shows because I'm so focused in, but um, social media has played a huge factor in that and being able to talk to people and make the, that those kind of connections. That's a really good point. It was something I, I never really th thought of till you mentioned that, but I was thinking about like doing a podcast and there's some guests I've met in person or I've known them for a long time, but probably 90% of them I never have. And I think, how would I connect with them? Well, it'd be through social media. It'd be through different things like that, that like, 15, 20 years ago or longer, that didn't exist. Like you had to go and like strike up a conversation and like, believe it or not, I suck at doing that. Like I'm not good <laughs> at just going up to a stranger and striking up a conversation. That's just not my thing. So I could see how that could really help in, in networking and being able to connect to these different events and, and reach that goal that you have. Yep. My friend, Ryan Rusnick, he's also like a huge uh, motor. Well, he does mainly truck and tractor pulls, but he does racing too um photographer he always makes fun of me that i don't talk to people when i'm at shows and he's like <laughs> more social and i'm like i just can't do it <laughs> <laughs> i think one of the things that probably would help though is like the passion for trucks i find that that's helped me a lot if i have like a shared common interest i'm a, i'm more outgoing or more like extroverted, I guess it'd probably be the word going to these things, but it's tough at first. Like it can be a barrier and, and I wish it wasn't like that. I wish I was more extroverted and could just go up and talk to anybody. Um, but you know, a lot of the stuff that we chat about on the podcast is like truck parts and builds and things like that. But I found that there's a lot of listeners who are younger who say all those things are great, but I'm not mechanically inclined. I'm not going to build a truck. I'm, I'm not a driver, but I want to be involved in this. How do I do it through talking or media or photography or any of these different things? And so I know we didn't talk about this side of it, but I think that's really cool to kind of focus in on how you can still find a path in different ways. If you're not, you know, that super extroverted person or you're there and you're just super focused and you're maybe not thinking about networking, there's other ways that you can do it and still be a part of this. Yep. Yep. I feel like there's, I don't know, if you want to get into anything diesel related, there's so many different like avenues you can go down of depending on what your character is. There's always help like at polls. We're always looking for help, whether that's, you know, behind the scenes doing the computer work, trying to put the ads up on um, our like big LED screen or trying to sell things. It just, that's I think that's it's so cool with motorsports. You you get everything. You get a little bit of everything. What's it been like going to different regions and seeing how maybe the diesel scene is different there? So I haven't been to many of them. I've been to the Midwest a few times. I'm in Colorado, so I've seen it around here, but I don't know what it's like in Georgia or Florida or some of these other places. Does it vary a lot or is it all kind of similar or what's it like? Honestly, all you gearheads are the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, 
Yeah, no, I, I really, I don't think there's really much of a difference on that kind of stuff, really. Are the builds different? Like maybe not necessarily on the sled pulling side, but like when you're at an event, there's probably other things going on with maybe drag racing or show and shines and stuff like that. Are the, is there a big difference between regions with like the trucks you see in the parking lot or, or the different ones that are out there with styling? Um, uh, Midwest, you will see, you know, nice trucks, but they still have show their rust <laughs> all yeah. around. And when I went down to Georgia, like those trucks were pretty darn clean during the, so they have like the, the truck pull portion, but they also had a truck show off to the side and you don't, those, those vehicles were pretty darn clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know whenever, whenever I've looked like in marketplace or any place like that for like an older truck, there's a certain region where I'll definitely look. And then ones where I definitely won't look. And it's like, it's, it, it is amazing. I've actually done a few podcasts with people that uh, have done like restorations on their trucks and they're not even, I guess they're old, but I don't see them as old, like third gens and stuff, but yep. they've been in Wisconsin or other States. And they just talk about how hard it is to keep the rust off through the winters. It is. It is terrible. It's a constant battle. Even my truck, I get like a little chip and it's like, oh my God, I get, you're like, you have to fix the chip. Eloise, you know, that that's going to be the first freaking little cancer spot that comes up of the freaking rust. And then it so spreads. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Where, as far as like 2024, what are some events where you're planning to be at, or you would like to be at as far as completing that 49 state goal? Um, so this year I am going to be going to South Dakota. Um, I had another person reach out. I've shot in Nebraska, but, um, I think I'm going to go out there. And then there's another poll that's like close on the bordering state there that I'm trying to go to. And then, um, actually I made friends with a girl that she runs a sled up in Canada. And so I think I'm going to go shoot in Canada this year, which well, is pretty freaking. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. The, the, does it get harder to find as you go farther West states where they have sled pulling? Cause I I've always heard like, it's not, it's well, I know it's not as big farther West you go. Does it get difficult? Like say in Nevada or Colorado or Utah or Idaho states like that? Yeah. And a lot of what I run into a lot of times with those is that they may have like a truck or tractor pull that's going to be in that state, but it'll either be ran by like NTPA, which is guys that I shot while they were in Iowa. Cause it's like the same crowd. They're just traveling okay. along. So that's, that's like a big thing. I love going to the little shows. I'm, I grew up with like little shows and I would prefer to highlight those kind of people compared to like the big associations, just cause I feel like the little guys hardly get any attention. So trying to find little poles that aren't like antiques, I'm, I'm like, they're, they're antique pulling needs to be a thing because, you know, that's where pulling came from, but I am just not a fan of watching it. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of difficult. It is a challenge a little bit. I've never thought about it as a challenge, but it, <laughs> I, th I think that's, I think that really resonates with me as far as like you mentioned the, the smaller places um, versus the bigger ones, because it could be so hard to get attention, whether you're a competitor or in its event where there's these huge national things, it just pulls everybody in, but the passion's still the same. And I'm kind of the same way where like, if I'm gonna have a conversation with someone, I tend to gravitate more towards maybe the not well-known event that's going on or the not well-known race truck or, you know, some of my most favorite conversations were with people who were just, it was a diesel enthusiast. They didn't have a shop. They weren't selling anything and they wanted to restore this first gen Cummins and they're in the middle of Idaho or Montana or Kentucky or something. That's what I gravitate towards because it's just so organic and so relatable. And yep. I think that can kind of be a challenge too, especially now is how much can the enthusiast or the truck owner relate to what's going on. And I think that's kind of been a huge struggle 
with diesel performance, like when I got started in it, it was cool to have 550 horsepower and be able to drive it every day. And then that number got, you know, to a thousand and now we're talking 3000 plus. And it can be tough when you have a truck and it's your main vehicle. How well can you relate to 3000 horsepower, 2,500 in a daily driver? I can relate better to six, seven, 800 horsepower. And so I, I agree with you. I like to kind of focus on those, those smaller kind of venues, those smaller kind of stories. Cause I can relate to them more. Yep. I definitely feel that like I can relate to that more to be able to talk to them and ask them, you know, the questions of like, oh, well, how did you get started? And, or how did you get into the, I love listening to the stories of those people just because, you know, some of them would be like, oh, well, my grandpa had, you know, this truck or tractor sitting there and like, it took me five or six years to complete this build. And, you know, those guys aren't out there to like win. They're out there to be like, just doing it, experiencing it and having fun. And that's, I, I really enjoy that a lot. I like getting the backstory and I'm, I'm not trying to like downplay like the bigger guys that, you know, go to these big performance shops. Cause I'm sure, you know, they, they have the, how they got there as well, but I like listening to the little guy struggle and what they, what, what did they have to do or go through to get that build out there? common question we get from you guys a lot is, Hey, I need a diesel engine. I either, you know, I can't wait this long to get one or normal place. I get stuff from it. It it just takes too long or I don't, they don't have the parts in it that I need. Maybe my truck's not stock or I tow heavy with it. I don't want to go back with just a stock engine. DFC diesel is a sponsor of the podcast. We worked with them, you know, hand in hand on doing episodes, answering technical questions. They have a complete lineup of Cummins, Duramax and power stroke remanufactured engines that are set to a standard of ISO 9001 2015 standards, which is a huge deal in the aftermarket. And there's certain levels of quality testing validation that are required for that. So, you know, when you get one of those engines, the type of quality that's built behind it with an industry leading warranty, that's really comprehensive. And, you know, the other thing with that is, you know, sometimes the options that are out there, it's just, it's a basic OEM engine. You want a little bit more. You don't want to have the same failure again. So there's a bunch of different series of engines that they have um, from core um, street tow haul and also the speed of air series, which we've covered on the podcast before. There's a lot of really cool benefits to it. And if you have questions about that, reach out to them. If you don't know the type of engine that you're looking for, if you go to dfcdiesel.com, there's a ton of info there. You can send an email or you can reach out to them. Also, they're working with speed of air pistons, which it's the only piston that pays for itself. And there's a lot of really cool technology behind it. So you can add that into your build and be able to get better fuel economy, um, you know, increase power, increase torque and, and better engine life out of it. Um, you know, some of the most common engine applications or, or, or series of engines that they have with that lead time, a lot of them are in stock or they have really short lead times. So you can check your favorite retailer or go to dfcdiesel.com, uh, check them out, see what's in stock, see what you can get. If you have questions, maybe you want to do, you know, something that's outside of the, the normal series of engines. They have tons of choices for rods, cranks, pistons, valve train upgrades, tons of different things. So if you're in the market, definitely make sure and head on over and check them out. On kind of on that same, that same track, what would you tell someone out there that they love photography and maybe they do it in some other type of industry or they do something totally different and they think I would love to use some of my time to be able to capture motorsports. What, like what advice would you give them? Um, just keep consistent and don't try to bite off more than you can chew. Like, like I said, I started off with taking photos literally with my iPhone Like I didn't have a legit camera. I ran somebody else's video camera, you know? So like I learned how to, like what angles you need to get at. But I literally started with my phone and it it took a whole bunch of people basically shoving money in my pocket telling me to actually get a real camera. And then, so just, I, my problem I had is like, I got like a real expensive camera at first. I did not know how to run it. And that was a struggle for a year. And I feel like if I would have got a like a smaller, simpler camera, then maybe it would have been a little <laughs> bit easier and less frustrations. You know, you try to shoot a whole event and basically all the photos are crap because you can't run your camera. 
So I really feel like taking it slow and just letting things happen is a big thing with me. That's really good advice for a lot of stuff in motorsports. Like I was thinking of builds and sometimes, you know, you get that truck and you think, well, I want 1500 horsepower and you jump into it. And there's so many stories or conversations I've had with people where they're like, yeah, this is too much. I don't need all this power. I wasted this money or, you know, I went too far. or I didn't expect it to turn into this kind of big of an expense, but I guess just growing with it would probably be a way to look at it. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like, it disappoints me that some people they'll get this like big project truck and they want to dump all this money in. And so like, they'll spend money on these big parts, like, you know, a big fancy fucking turbo and like, then they get burnt out or they run out of funds and then there it sits. Yeah. And it's like, Oh my goodness. If you would have just started off just a little bit like smaller and got everything together, then you can start like upgrading bits and pieces here and there but like now it sits and then you know how projects sit <laughs> it normally yep. takes a long time <laughs> they end up being paperweights sitting in the shop or the garage for a long time i heard this anal- i heard this yeah. anal- analogy the other day that just goes right in line with that is um, somebody was talking about having a fast car and you know say you get up to 100 miles an hour on some road track or something like that what's exciting isn't cruising at a hundred miles an hour doing this. It's going from zero to a hundred. And he was talking about the process of getting someplace. It's more exciting and rewarding going from point A to point B than it is being at point B. And that kind of reminded me of that with, with the build side of it. And, and probably, you know, like what you do it, growing through it, starting with your, your phone to going to this expensive camera. And then all you learned along the way, is where the reward came from. And it's the same thing with building a truck or building, you know, a pulling truck or a drag truck or a show truck or anything like that. It's, you know, the process and, and things that, uh, that you learn along the way. It it really amazes me how much of, how much motorsports is connected in all of its different aspects to it, whether it's the media side, the racing side, just being an enthusiast, wanting to modify your truck and get a little bit better power. It connects so well. Yep. With, it, it's a lot of different type of people to come together <laughs> to <yeah>. make. Work. <laughs> now, have you ever thought of building a pulling truck or do you have one or you thought about doing it? No. Um, I am more of a tractor gal. I love tractors, uh, but no, they're expensive. I'll stay behind the camera. <laughs> if somebody broke me in the driver's seat, I will give her hell. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'll stick to that. <laughs> that's that's the tough part about getting into it is it's really fun and exciting, but it's like the trucks have progressed and the technology and everything that they have has gone so far. It's a huge commitment to be competitive. And the to stay competitive. Yeah. You're like you can build the best truck ever for 2024. And then if you don't upkeep or continue doing things, you're going to fall, fall behind. And then there you're, you're no longer the best truck out there. And it's, it's a consistent, just keeping up, like upkeep. Well, not only upkeep, but like keeping up with what the new parts are coming out. It is wild how much far performance parts come every single year. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Honestly. Do you think that's one of the biggest like overlooked parts of motorsports is, maintaining it like with the team the people i that that just strikes me as one of the it's not talked about enough how hard it is to just keep it going yeah yeah and the knowledge you have to you have to like i feel like you constantly have to be a sponge or you have to have a mechanic that's constantly a sponge and listening to every like all the little gossip of like oh well this part might be coming out this year or this <laughs> talking about doing this with like their you know whatever playing around it's just you always have your eyes and ears open to all the new stuff and be in <laughs> well it's not it's no job that like one person can do and <laughs> i think of just you see it more than i do but it's like all the moving parts that are involved 
in getting there in building it and maintaining it, the spare parts, what can break? How do I get the spares there? Who can work on it? How do we get back, get ready for the next one? Like it's a whole, it's almost like a, a, a business, a corporation, a whole system that you need in place for it. Yeah. And you know, if you ever talk to a wife or a girlfriend of a truck or tractor puller, they say that they basically say goodbye to their other half in the beginning of the summer and say hello again in fall because it it is wild. You know, like you think that you can have a, you have a pretty solid build and then you go down the track and it freaking shatters. Well, your next pull is either within the next couple of days, you have to get it back together if you want to stay competitive in points. So like, not only are you doing your upkeep, but it like, if something breaks, you have to do it. And it's a huge commitment when it comes to, you know, your family, even. There's a whole emotional side to it, which Mm -hmm. really isn't, it's really not talked about a whole lot, but like I've seen it and I've heard it because it's, it's, it's true what you mentioned, like with families involved and maybe it's not your full-time job going and sled pulling and you so you have this job you have a family and then you're leaving them to go do these things throughout the summertime and it's like you have to take that into account as well or if you get really close to achieving your goal and you just miss it and your whole family's like all in on it well it's not just you who's disappointed it's also this other disappointment and all these aspects to it it, it, it's always fascinated me the story is actually behind the race itself how it how it got there and what what's involved in it Yep. And and let me tell you, like when the families do show up to the polls and let's say the truck didn't do well, I feel like those kids that are watching on the sideline are so like so much more disappointed than what like their dad is. (laughs) (laughs) So wrapped up, so worked up. Oh my goodness. I think, I think it's so important what you do, so I've, I've mentioned it and talked about it on other podcasts before, is I think events are one of the first places where you can really get hooked on motorsports or diesel trucks like we're talking about. And it could be when you're young. I was older. I was like in my 20s when I, I first saw like a diesel drag race. And I was like, I didn't think these things could like do this. They can go this fast. They, they sound that cool. And it could completely change the course of someone's life, what they do for a career, what they do for a hobby, the things that they enjoy. And the capturing those moments is, is, is so cool. And you you definitely have a really good eye for how you capture the angle. You'd mentioned the textures, the lighting, everything like that. I almost feel like I'm right there. And I think who, who else is seeing this picture? Maybe there's somebody who's interested in it. It inspires them. Maybe it's the truck itself. Maybe it's how you captured the image maybe they're like me and they want to know like the story behind it or like you, like you mentioned wanting to hear the stories and that's the power of it and being able to capture it. And that's why I was so excited to do this podcast and had reached out to you because I've never talked about that um, with somebody on the podcast is how do you take those special moments and then distribute them all over North America? There's probably people all over the world that see your pictures. They might even message you and ask you. Um, Like one of the coolest things it's like i have this event that's down in australia oh my goodness they they keep flirting with my page i flirt with their page (laughs) down there in the freaking worst way but yeah i love i don't i like bringing the different aspect of it i don't i've had so many followers that have like they'll comment that they're not like huge into truck and tractor pulling but they love looking at the photos and i feel like if they're chance of them looking at the photo and being like oh my gosh that is so cool and then then that brings them to being like oh well my hometown has a pole and if it makes them go to that pole that is like my that is just what I find is like my goal or like the cool thing is just I I want to bring more awareness to motorsports motorsports is a dying breed unfortunately it's it's changing and I don't know the stands compared to like when I was a kid going to this stuff. I just feel like it's not as packed as it used to be. So if there's even a small chance that I bring in some odd aspect as a, such as taking photos and posting it online and somebody might finding that cool and going to that event, that that's, that's where it's at. I think you said it best right there. That's, that's really why 
everyone should do it. You know, if they're involved in motor motorsports in any way is keeping it going. Like I think back to being a real little kid and going to motorsports stuff and it was always packed. Yeah. And versus now I see less of it. I don't know if that's because of social media and you can watch a feed now or you can see pictures or if people are preoccupied with other stuff. I know that it seems, well, I don't know, but it seems like people are still passionate about like going fast and performance. But I just wonder if the way they're connecting to it is different. But like, what do you think it is or what would you attribute it to? I, I never thought about that as well as that, you know, there are people probably that are online and staying at home, but I feel like in order to really experience it, you got to smell the diesel and you feel like the dirt, you know, going up. I, I don't know. I, I wish people would just go and it, it's so much more different watching on the screen compared to like being there for the event and experiencing it and seeing it. And, you know, when a freaking truck goes down and it makes an incredible pass and like, you can feel it like in your chest when you're there going down, that is like, I don't know. Wish people would get out of their homes a little bit just to go. <laughs> Cause I you feel it. Won't, you'll, you'll get hooked. I've had some, some, uh, people who drag race and, and stuff. And they always talk about, you just have to make one pass, even if it's like in an ET class or like near stock, once you experience doing it once, it's like that starts the whole snowball yep. effect. And I've never sled pulled. I have drag raced and I could agree. Like the first time I did it, I was hooked. Like my leg was shaking. The adrenaline was going. I was so excited. And then it was, it was over after that. It was like, well, let me spend some money. Let me learn how to do this. Let me talk with people. Let me figure out what I'm doing. And it was so different than watching it in the stands, which was actually at the same racetrack, but it was spaced out by about five or six years. It was different being in the stands versus actually going down there. I didn't have a fast truck, but it was just the experience of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last year I got to experience going to uh, uh, Black Hawk Raceway, which is in Illinois. And I got to shoot some race cars and like, I didn't think it was going to be, I don't know. I, I mean, I like fast cars, but I didn't think I would get it's going to feel the same way as I do at a pole. But they put me up, up, up above the track and oh my goodness, like it was this <laughs> wooden thing. And so when they're freaking flying underneath you and the things like wobbling, I'm like, oh my God, that is so <laughs> freaking cool. Like, you know, you you don't experience that. I see I see the videos and it's like yeah that's cool and that would be awesome. But until you get out there, it's like you don't really connect with it. And now like if anybody ever asked me to go to another like race event, I'd be like hell yeah I will go in a heartbeat. That is like, so awesome. Very thankful. The friend that had reached out to me, he had built a race car, and so he was just out there practicing it. And it was actually kind of cool because it took him several years to get it all put together. So it was kind of like a big moment for him, but very thankful for that kind of stuff. And see that like kind of going back to connections, just knowing people, I would have never got out there and experienced that if it wasn't for a random connection I had made a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are incredibly important. And I think that's a really good piece of advice, no matter what part of motorsports somebody wants to get in. Like I, recently I've had like a few younger people like the right out of high school and they really, they love diesel trucks and they've either grown up around them or, you know, they have their own and, and they'll say, Hey, can you get a guest on to talk about like how to get into diesel or how to do this stuff? And the one common thing that everyone I ask talks about is networking, whether that's just going around to shops and saying, Hey, do you need any help? I'll, I'll do this. Or, um, sending out resumes or whatever it might be. It's just the bigger you can make that net. Yeah. You can, you can start to meet, you know, people that can help you on the journey. You can learn from them. They can learn from you. And uh, yeah, that's, that, that's a, that's a really good point. It's funny. You mentioned those cars going around. Cause I went to a NASCAR race once and I, I had seen NASCAR. I'm not, I'm not really a huge fan, but I always thought, how can people go to these things and just watch these cars go around for however long they do it? It's got to be boring. Well, I sat wherever my seats were. Somebody gave me the tickets. 
they were right on one of the turns. And after a couple of turns, you're like, I can feel this in my chest. Like this is totally different than watching on TV when all these cars go by. And it's like, now I see why they draw a hundred thousand people and it's on TV all the time. And it's such a big industry because you're able to connect to it in such a different way. Yep. And that's why I've been to a couple truck shows and when, I don't know. I never thought like watching like a dyno pass like would be really, really cool. And so I had to take photos for it. And then after like the first or second one, like being able to see all the smoke and like smell it all, like that whole experience is so freaking cool. And I (laughs) never thought I would, the the truck is just sitting there. Come on. How fun could it be realistically? Oh, so much more different. (laughs) (laughs) It was it was really cool to to chat with you. Like I said, I I've I've seen your photography for a long time. I appreciated it, but then being able to have this chat with you today and connect and hear your passion and excitement for it and the journey you've been on and the goals that you have, it's really exciting. And I know there's people out there. I'm sure they've reached out to you and told you, but I know people are going to see what you do and you're going to make that connection for people. And it's it's going to spark something, whether it's to you know start taking pictures whether it's to do it as a career whether it's a hobby that makes them happy it's you're capturing exactly why we all do what we do and enjoy trucks and performance and tractors and racing and all those things so i appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today i did want to say for people who want to follow what you do or i wanted to ask you for people who want to see you know your pictures maybe they want to connect with you what's the best way to reach out to you and do that the best way um Follow my Facebook page. It's Midwest uh, Tractor Blonde Photography. That's going to be the best way. Um, be honest, I, I don't use my personal page too much. And I don't really respond to people very often on there. But um, if you want to get a hold of me, my that Facebook page, I'm always responding. I always see the stuff. But that's the best way. Or if you see me out in public, most of the time I'll be wearing a red, I wear like a red polo that's got a big flag on it. I'm very patriotic. Um, just come up and talk to me. If I look serious, I'm, I'm really not serious. I'm just <laughs> in the zone. So. <laughs> very cool. I appreciate your time today, JC. It was really cool to chat with you. Keep me updated on, you know, things you're doing or you know, as you get closer to that 49 state goal, or if you capture something that's really cool, um, or if you come across somebody and you're like, this guy has got a really cool story. This is a really cool, you know, team, you know, let me know. I'd love to chat with them, have them on the podcast and have them be able to tell, you know, their story to our listeners. Heck yeah, definitely. I'll do that for you. Don't forget diesel fans, make sure and head on over to Kershaw.kaiusa.com. Use code TDP40 to get 40% off MSRP. It's a great way to save some money, get some cool gear. They've got a ton of knives for EDC, hunting, fishing, uh, things you can use for work around the house, everything in between. Um, Their whole lineup of knives is designed to meet any budget. Tons of choices, different blade steel, blade shape, different opening mechanisms, different handle designs. So make sure and head on over their website if you're in the market and use code TDP40 for 40% off MSRP. Also, if you got a Duramax from LB7, L5P, anything in between, and looking to make sure that truck lasts as long as possible, gets, uh, you know, if, if you're doing a build, looking to upgrade suspension, make a little bit more power, address some of the issues that those trucks can have, head on over to dmaxstore.com. They've got a brand new website, ton of new, ton of products on there, uh, a lot of really good information. But if you have questions about your build, want to make sure you get the right parts, you know, in the right order, maximize your budget, and build that dream truck, give them a call at 877 for my DMAX. Also want to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters, Tyler Lona, 23 Diesel, Cutter Up Rob, J. Cole, uh, Colby, all of our other Patreon supporters, all of you who subscribe on YouTube podcast apps, follow us on social media. We appreciate all your support here in year eight of the Diesel Podcast and look forward to bringing you more of the content you want here in 2024. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.